What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Madden 17 breakdown video. Second time doing this, but one of my friends from the Madden Ultimate Team subreddit went ahead, sent me one of his Twitch VODs, and asked me to take a look at the gameplay. So I went ahead, checked it out. Definitely a competitive game, but little did I know that he was ranked number one on the Xbox One salary cap ranked leaderboards at the time. I had no idea. So you see right here, Ballistic Elm 75 record season five record 189 wins 24 losses insane record uh, so crazy win rate obviously after seeing the record that's what made me check i was like oh that's an insane record let me look at the leaderboards and i look at it and he's ranked number one so crazy 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 uh, but quick plug for the madden ultimate team subreddit if you guys would be interested in checking out something like that it's basically a forum if you know what reddit is it's a forum where a bunch of guys basically just get together and talk about Madden, Mutt, you know, they you can get advice, tips, you can just talk to people about the game. Uh, they put all the breaking news out, so you'll get all the newest news on players, items, uh, different just announcements with Mutt in general. So definitely a cool place to hang out if you just like talking Mutt, Madden and Mutt and to meet some cool people in the community. So getting into the gameplay here, if I can find it on uh, the video. So yeah, perfect timing. So first and 10 right here. A ballistic Elm going to be starting the ball, or starting the game with the ball, rather, on offense here. Patriots uniforms, gun, Y trips to the right. His opponent, Mo Bread Fred, I believe was in the top 100 whenever I checked uh, the leaderboard. So definitely a quality matchup here. Two high-level players uh, going at it. So great gameplay here. So a gun, Y trips from ballistic Elm on offense. And you see uh, from Fred on defense, you see the nickel 245. Uh, flipped so that Nickelback pressuring uh, off that right edge threatening to bring that pressure so Ballistic Elm gonna have to be prepared for that first play of the game here goes with the corner strike setup and hits the out route to a Ladarius Green and picks up 10 yards so nice read uh, from Ballistic Elm to start off the game on the out route so second or first and 10 second play of the game rather goes corner strike to the left kind of a skimbo like setup goes with the in route so the reason I say a Skimbo-like setup, uh, this is a, a setup that Skimbo loves to run out of gun bunch corner strike. Basically, you go table route, C route on the left side, and then you drag your tight end, and he fills in really nicely. Uh, this defender right here it gets dragged out to the sideline by the running back, and then this area gets vacated, and you're able to squeeze in that tight end route. Elm actually uh, went with the backside read where he had, it looked like an in route right here by Terrell Pryor and then a deep dig. And he basically read his opponent's user. And so he basically said, okay, your user, you're sinking back to the dig route. Great recognition. Uh, that was a really, like, precise read by Elm right there, throwing the in route. And he ends up getting upfield and getting 14 yards with Terrell Pryor. So first and 10, and you see cover six, show two from his opponent. So different defensive style right there. You usually see a lot of, you know, nickel blitz, cover two, cover three shells. Not really much cover six. Uh, so definitely an interesting adaptation by his opponent and something that he's going to have to be on the lookout for as the game goes on. Y trips once again goes inside zone. Darius Jackson breaks a tackle, then takes a huge hit and gets down to the 49-yard line. So pick up a two second and eight here. Still a same defensive look on defense, same offensive look on offense. Goes with the pressure off the right edge, gets it picked up. PA post cross shot. His opponent actually plays this really well. His opponent knows where he needs to be. He knows he needs to watch for that deep crossing route right there. Uh, this backside deep post actually doesn't get open against this cover six defense uh, like it would against maybe a cover two shell. So that's an instance where, you know, this cover six paying off for his opponent rather than the normal cover two shell you see out of something like nickel blitz, as well as this fade route down the sideline, not really going to get open against that cover six because you have two, you know, deep quarter defenders playing on the right side right deep side of the field you're not really going to be able to flood it like you could uh, maybe a cover two style defense so good defense from his opponent so elms forced to go ahead and throw the football away there so third and eight pretty crucial play right here gun bunch to the right for the first time and his opponent goes ahead and flips his defense to the left so you see uh, the cornerback walking over to the left so now pressuring pressure off that left side which is an in interesting call to me because i mean now darius jackson is on the left side of the qb and so that might make it a little easier for Elm to pick up that pressure, but maybe his opponent likes to go with this setup against 
uh, the the gun bunch look rather than the wide trip. So could just be personal preference right here. And he goes with the table route out the backfield. Darius Jackson breaks a tackle and almost gets the first down. But I really like that read, and let me tell you why. So basically what you're going to see here, if I can stop the fa the rewind. Whoops, okay, let's see if I can fast forward a little bit until uh, that third and eight. But what you're going to see here is you see a corner strike concept off the left edge, but because his opponent is playing this cover six, right? So he's playing cover six, so this guy's going to be bailing. The, the, the corner on the side of the nickel blitz is going to be bailing deep because of the cover six. So he's in a deep quarter, he's in a deep quarter, he's playing this deep half. So that's kind of the, the shell of a cover six. Well, he's blitzing the nickel back, the outside corner is bailing, so there's literally nobody else out there uh, to be able to play, you know, a hard flat or a cloud flat to defend against, you know, this table route or this C route. They both would have been open. He might not have had enough time to throw the C route because that pressure was coming in hot off the left edge, but he ended up dumping it down to the table route. The only guy who's going to defend that is his user, and his user is not anywhere near the play. He, he started off on the bunch side, so I think that's something Elm could go to a lot of the time if his opponent wants to keep sending this pressure out of a cover six. Uh, basically, it, it's hard whenever you're sending pressure and dropping two guys deep on the same side of the formation. It, it really leaves the you know flats vacated because if you look at the play art here, right? So this might be kind of hard to draw in, but this guy right here that's in that quarter flat zone, he's the one that's blitzing, right? So this guy right here is the one that ends up blitzing. So you got this guy dropping back, this guy dropping back. The only guy who can get out there into the flat is this linebacker right here. This this hook zone linebacker, if I can try and circle him right there, and it's just it's just not gonna be an effective a way to s slow down you know these corner strike like concepts uh, that Ballistic Elm started off the game running. So it'll be interesting to see kind of the adaptation that goes on as the game uh, unfolds. Right there, Elm picks up the first down on the QB sneak, clutch first down, pretty much puts him in field goal range, 57 yard field goal from this spot. And so you see Elm goes back to wide trips. His opponent goes back to the nickel on the right side. So making some adjustments here. Goes with the snap. Still pressure off the right. And he's not going to be able to find anything. He's got to throw the ball away. Good defense by his opponent. Now that's going to be a hard concept to squeeze in against that cover six because you can't really flood it with a four verticals type of look the same way you can a cover two. Um, I think Elm right there might have been looking to hit like a dump down out of the backfield to Darius Jackson, but his opponent actually did a good job of being all over that. So good play by his opponent right there. And Elm goes ahead, hits the high point to the outside to Des Bryant. Great read right there. Uh, fantastic recognition. For the first time all game, his opponent sent uh, the other corner, the wide corner blitz right there. And Elm instantly realizes it and throws a an high and outside pass lead uh, to away from this safety to where only Des Bryant would be able to catch the ball. The safety had zero shot at making a play on it. Great recognition. First time his opponent brought it out all game, and he instantly diagnosed it. So good recognition right there from Ballistic Elm. I think that was the third time I said the word recognition. But <laughs> great play right there to get him down into the red zone. And, and threatened to put up some points on the board early in the game. So gun wide trips once again to the right, nickel back to the right again for his opponent. His opponent goes with the wide corner blitz, and Elm throws an interception right to the linebacker. So let's go ahead take a look at what happened on this play exactly. So it looks like right here uh, his opponent did make an adjustment, so he went ahead and sent the wide corner blitz once again, but this time his opponent, instead of just having – you know, that deep half zone, he manned up Des Bryant. So that kind of outside pass lead high point on the fade route wasn't really there. That safety kind of got over there a lot quicker to make a play. Looks like his opponent also had a hard flat out here guarding that table route out the backfield. So both receivers on the left pretty much blanketed. So Elm couldn't go to that. And you see this cornerback on the left right here has z nobody going to block him. So Elm's on a time clock already. And you kind of see... Uh, his route combo developing on the right side kind of looks very similar, actually probably identical to his first play of the game. He went the out route by the tight end, a C route right there, and then he's going to have a dig route over the middle. And so what you're going to see kind of as the play rolls here is that that dig route going to get just a little bit caught up there. And 
I'm not sure. Maybe he just didn't see that linebacker. That's the only thing I could think is that he didn't see this linebacker right here. He might have been looking at his opponent's user and said, oh, he's not in a position to be able to get over there in time. So I'm going to throw it. And he just didn't see the linebacker. Obviously, the right read right here would have been to just throw this out route and, you know, try to get upfield, maybe squeeze into the end zone if you can fall forward, break a tackle or something. Because it looks like this man was in a maybe a cloud flat and he looks like he was dropping back pretty far. So um, that, I think, would have been the read. But misread by Ballistic Elm right there. Good play by his opponent having a guy in the area. And probably, like I said, just did not see the defender there. So now he's got to take over on defense. Uh, his opponent's going to have to drive 96 yards uh, to put up seven points here. But obviously you want to get some points whenever you get in the red zone. So his opponent comes out gun snugs on offense. Looks like Elm dollar defensive look. Linebacker shifted to the right to try and slow down probably maybe some seam routes, maybe some corner routes on that right edge. Play act or not play action rather. HB base. Chris Johnson, I believe that is. Yep, Chris Johnson, 17 yards up the gut on first down. So, and also his opponent instantly chewing clock. So, <laughs> that's that's always a fun game. Uh, but HB base, second down once again, squeezes in. So, his opponent showing pretty good run stick right here. Chris Johnson getting loose. Two carries for 43 on that HB base. So, Elm going to have to figure something out. Maybe not shift those linebackers anymore and keep them in the middle like he's doing now to kind of shore up that run D. His opponent goes with a, ooh, Elm almost baited that about as perfectly as you could All right there. He went with a simple flat route, corner route concept on the left. Elm did a good job, knows you have to user that corner route, and then he just went with a backside check down. Elm did a good job, usered the corner, and then clamped down on the in route. Almost had the interception there, as you can see. Almost baited him in just a, a nanosecond earlier, and it probably would have been an interception, so... A good read by Elm. So his opponent, although he got three yards, he can't really be too thrilled about that uh, almost going the other way. So right here, motion out. So PA wide receiver cross instantly. Elm's got the right defense set up for it. Manned up that outside receiver. Great defense right there. In my opinion, if you're going to play some type of cover two shell, and I actually talked to him about it. If you're going to play some type of cover two shell against gun snugs, you have to man up, in my opinion, uh, this outside receiver right here. Uh, because he's the one who runs all the cover two busters, right? So, you know, PA cross, he's he's the one that's running this deep, you know, corner route that gets open against cover two if you don't have someone manned up on him. Uh, and Bronco Seams, or I I believe it is called Bronco Seams, uh, he runs, you know, this kind of wheel route up the sideline that is going to get open against cover two. He's the one that runs all those cover two buster routes. So I think if you're going to run something like a DB fire two press or slant zone two or nickel blitz two, I think you got to find a way to allocate a resource to man up that receiver or else he's going to be running wide open all over the field against an experienced gun snugs user. So a good play right there from Elm to go ahead and lock that up and take that route away, which is definitely where his opponent wanted to go. So third and three here. Uh, let's see, his opponent might go back to maybe an HB base. Elm shifted that linebacker to the right, which scares me. I think HB base looks really good right here. If I were his opponent, he doesn't go with it, goes motion out and throws the slant over the middle of the field. So good read by his opponent right there. Um, I would have been expecting, honestly, an HB base. Looks like Elm went double flat zone on the right side here. Looks like hard flat, cloud flat. And so this this slant route, no crossman or anything, no user in the area. Elm had to use her. His opponent likes running this uh, flat route, corner route concept on that left side. So Elm's been kind of using that to start the play. So good recognition by his opponent, knowing where Elm's user was going to be and attacking the other side of the field, knowing he wasn't going to be able to make a play on that motion out slant route. So I like that play call from his opponent right there. First and 10, still gun snug, still dollar on defense. So still same route concept on the left side. And there it is right there, the touchdown on the cover two buster route um, up the sideline. Basically this time Elm doesn't go with the man up, goes instead with the double flats. You see hard flat, cloud flat, or hard flat, soft squat, whichever combination it is. Double flats, no man up assignment. Elm has to be using this side of the field to start with to take away that corner route. His opponent knows this. And really, he kind of had his pick. He could have probably went with an inside pass lead right here and cut off the ball from the safety. Or obviously, the, the obvious choice is just wait, be patient, let this guy get wide open past that cloud flat. That's exactly what happened. So nice outside pass lead away from the safety. I don't even think it was needed, but 
rat catch touchdown for his opponent. So Elm kind of on the back foot here, uh, had a good opening drive and then turned the ball over and his opponent responded pretty easily, I would say. So down 7-0, uh, still early in the second quarter. So definitely expect him to bounce back here. Gun bunch to the right. PA post setup looks like. And he goes up top to Des Bryant and he gets the rat catch and shoestring tackle. So great read from Elm right here. Uh, if his opponent is starting to, you saw this at the end of last drive, his opponent's starting to uh, blitz this corner, and then he mans up the safety to Des Bryant. Def depending on how fast that safety is, this could be a matchup that Elm exploits all game long. He actually would have had, he did a good job, actually picked up the pressure. His opponent's user was playing really aggressively on that drag route, so he had that fade, but he also would have had this post route going over the middle. He could have down pass led it, you know, cut it off from this safety right here. So either way, would have resulted in a big play for him. So I think that's a good job adjusting to what his opponent wants to do on the fly and, uh, you know, showing his opponent, you know, if you're going to keep blitzing that wide corner and keep manning up that safety on Des Bryant, I'm going to be able to pick you apart. So he's going to have to come up with a different defensive game plan here. Gun bunch to the right once again. Now his opponent doesn't base align this time. So maybe, you know, no base align. You, you might think man-to-man -man coverage, some type of, maybe hybrid man zone type of deal. He goes with the blitz off the right edge. Blitz comes in, definitely not man-to-man, -man, definitely a zone blitz, and uh, that pressure just came screaming. There's not much you can do about that. He, he came flying off the edge. I think that was Mel Blunt. So uh, second and 10, just go back to the drawing board right here. Goes back to the baseline, gun bunch to the right. Actually doesn't bring any pressure. Block shed almost gets an interception. So that was kind of unfortunate. Uh, his opponent actually only rushed, well, he rushed four, but his defensive end basically gets an instant block shed on that left tackle right there. And his opponent did a good job of taking away a lot of routes. I think your route that you had to hit right there was that corner route uh, to that B receiver right as he cut. But obviously Elm was under pressure. He was dropping back really far. So that's a tough throw to make. Obviously left side of the field blanketed. Looks like a man-to-man -man defender on the table route. C route literally bracketed by two guys. This route's too sketchy to throw with this user in the area. And then this guy's obviously, it looks like he might be manned up or that's a hard flat. So the read would have been that B receiver on the corner, but under so much pressure, it's, it's kind of tough to make that throw, especially when you're drifting back and you're rolling kind of to the opposite side of the field. So, you know, a throw away or, uh, you know, uh, I guess not a sack fumble, but uh, basically getting hit and the ball falling harmlessly to the ground was probably the best outcome for Elm right there. So third and 10, let's see uh, what he can do here. His opponent actually comes out different look here. So it looks like some type of 3-3-5 um, set up here. It looks like actually True Boys nickel 3-3-5 set up that he liked to run. Um, but that was only found in the 4-6 playbook, I'm almost positive. So, uh, But nonetheless, interesting setup. Still same concept. You're still going to most likely see pressure off the left edge right here. So let's see, Elm goes with the motion over to the right side. The pressure comes screaming in, and nice dot on the left side of the field right there from Elm. So, yeah, so cover four, show two. Looks like that was nickel 335 wide his opponent went to right there. But well, we can go ahead and take a look at this. So his opponent brings three off the left edge, and on the back end actually does a lot of manning up. So right here, I cover four, so this is the deep quarter running with that fade. Looks like he went with the man-to-man -man assignment right here, and he dropped out his other outside linebacker into a man-to-man -man assignment on the tight end. Elm happened to have a speed in route going over the middle of the field, and you see he's going to get that separation possession catch of four Ladarius Green right there. So first and 10, ball at the 14. Let's see, corner strike, this is the area where he made a mistake last time. So let's see what he can get going right there. Goes C route or table route out the backfield rather. Ends up turning up field and getting about nine yards. So great read. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier. If he wants to keep sending that, I mean, he, it looks like he's still sitting in a cover six defense here. Uh, this guy's still bailing. This guy's still playing deep. This guy's deep. This might be either a deep zone or a cloud flat or soft squad. It's kind of hard to tell on that back end. Uh, but basically, as long as this corner is bailing and this corner is blitzing, you're going to be able to hit that table route all day long. So great read right there. I'd like to see him uh, go to that a little bit more uh, throughout this game, maybe. So wide trips goes no huddle, second and one. Goes with the high point to Des Bryant, gets batted down. So 
try to catch his opponent off guard. I don't mind that play call. Third and one here, maybe something a little more conservative. His opponent looks like goes to Dollar inside zone to Darius Jackson. Falling forward gets to the one yard line, and that's going to bring up the two minute warning here. So let's see if he can sneak it in. He snuck it for a yard earlier. So let's see if he tries to go with the same thing. QB sneak, and he gets into the end zone. So his opponent having some trouble stopping that QB sneak out of that 4 4, and he picks up the touchdown. So that's something to note if you are a ballistic elm later on in the game and you need a yard or some inches you know QB sneak has been pretty reliable up to this point so game tied up at seven I would like to see elm basically the only adjustment I think he needs to make is you need to you you need to man up this receiver right here if you want to run DB fire two press against snugs um doesn't look like he's doing that it looks like he might be sending pressure goes back to the HB base that he was having a lot of success with on the first drive and only picks up two so uh, that run D may be getting shored up a bit. That block shed helps out. Um, Elm back with the linebacker to the right shift goes. And yeah, so Elm getting some block sheds here. Uh, two in a row that he wasn't getting on that first drive, which obviously helps a lot Olivier Vernon. So third and eight. Now something to note, he flipped the play. So running back on the left now. Now Marshall's the one you got to worry about. Either running the wheel route or the deep corner route. Either or, uh, that's the guy you got to kind of put some priority on here especially on third and eight so pressure coming in goes with the corner route on the opposite side which is what elm had been covering the entire game and it looks like he kind of got caught in in a man-to-man -man situation on that right edge it looks like he maybe man assigned this guy elm forced to user the seam route and that cover two shell on the back side and so uh, he's got is that deandre hopkins running a corner out against a linebacker he's going to win that every single time so a good read by his opponent right there basically being very smart throwing wherever elms user is not so i like uh, kind of what his opponent's doing i like this adjustment from elm this is what i was talking about i like this man to man assignment you can't see the corner off the screen but uh, he made the adjustment he knows what he needs to do so i really like that right there high point corner route to hopkins and he drops it so uh, that was almost a beautiful pass from his opponent right there, high pointing it, even though Elm was in good position to make a play. Uh, the high point makes it really difficult. Uh, so going back, Elm all over the corner route, and that's what you see almost interception right there uh, from Ballistic Elm. And that's the adjustment, you know, on that on that back side. This man-to-man -man assignment right here is is what enabled this this play to get locked up. You know, you don't have to worry about you know, Elm's guarding this, the the flat route, he doesn't want to throw that. Um, you know, he manned up this guy, and then this guy's going to run deep. And this might even still be a vertical hook. Vertical hooks can match and play man-to-man -man coverage and bail out and go deep. So uh, that that could be a route where that vertical hook carried it. So everything locked up downfield. His opponent, third and ten now, got to be careful on his own 36. Elm still has all three timeouts, so Elm could definitely make something happen here before the half ends. So his opponent goes down, single back, wide trips here. Interesting look, play action. And he's sitting in the pocket, and he's going to launch it deep, and that's a touchdown. Ouch. So let's go ahead, let's go back and see how that happens. So looks like a cover three shell from Elm, and this is just a byproduct of, you know, those outside deep third defenders this year. The AI just was not very good. Uh, there were a, a plethora of cover three one-play touchdowns. Uh, using, you know, usually outside comeback routes to occupy this deep third, and then people would run a deep post or a deep crosser behind it. And it ended up getting wide open. In uh, this case, he wasn't even occupied by anything, just didn't get back there fast enough, and Hopkins burns the guy who was on top of him, playing man-to-man -man coverage, it looked like. And, uh, you know, Hopkins showboats into the end zone and goes up 14-7 right before halftime. So tough break right there from Ballistic Elm. I mean, I don't mind playing cover three right there, in all honesty. Usually you're not going to get beat like that. Maybe some players might feel more comfortable playing something like cover four or three men under, but I think cover three right there is fine in most cases. Kind of unlucky. Great play call from his opponent, so uh, kudos to him. Can't say it was luck. It was a good play call, uh, but I think that's a fine play call by Elm uh, in 90% of situations. So Elm trying to make something happen here before the half ends. Probably just going to go for a lob swerve here. One-on-one, -on -one, oh, actually, but his opponent does a good job clicking on and making sure that doesn't happen. So let's go ahead and see. <clears throat> his opponent going to get the ball here on offense. Now, Elm had been doing a pretty good job of shutting him down 
uh, since he started making that adjustment out of that gun snugs. So uh, his opponent going to single back wide trips now. Play action, same play here. Goes to the running back out the backfield. Picks up 12 and gets down. Doesn't want to get hit by Mel Blunt. So let's look at what happened here. So it looks like Elm going with maybe some type of cover two shell. Um, that's what it looks like to me. Look like a cover two type of shell. Yeah, so still in dollar. So still DB fire two press. Uh, but this guy definitely con getting converted into man to man. It looked like a cloud flat. But I think what might be happening is because this guy's the only receiver on this side of the quarterback. Since, you know, you got it's wide trip. So you have this receiver over here, this receiver, a tight end. And the running back is actually behind. Uh, the QB so it's kind of a similar situation to when you motion the running back across the formation at a gun bunch that backside cloud flat or soft squat whichever it is uh, will convert to man-to-man -man coverage and I think that's what's happening that's why you're seeing this guy follow Hopkins on the post and that actually allowed this running back to leak out of the backfield and be wide open so um, his opponent probably knows how that cloud flat on the backside is going to behave so a good call by his opponent and uh, Elm's going to have to adjust to that, either putting him in a curl flat or um, doing some type of other adjustment. So same play right here. Goes with the hard flat this time. Great adjustment. His opponent throws it. Ah, that was such a risky read. He actually ends up losing a yard. So right there you see it. Elm, a fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So goes with it right here. Hard flat. His opponent actually looks like he was just throwing blind into it. And uh, could have been very bad for his opponent, very good for Elm, but he ends up making the tackle, losing a yard, second and 11. So single back wide trips, let's see, he's run the same play three or four times out of single back wide trips. So let's see if he goes to something different. Nope, same play. So the good thing about that play, very telegraphed with the play action. So scanning the middle of the field, pressure gets there, almost strip sack for Aaron Rodgers and Joey Bosa, it looked like. So... Uh, his opponent going to have to try and come up with something else here. I feel like Elm doing a good job adjusting to that play, locking it up. His, his opponent looks like he's running at stock, so I can't imagine that that working much. And this was actually something I thought about. He's coming out single back wide trips and running play action every play. Run spinner. Like, you're in dollar, just just send the house at him and, and make him not even be able to throw the ball. Like, I mean, what's he going to throw? Like, this route's way too slow developing. This backside dig, too slow developing. Post route, too slow developing. If this guy leaks out of the backfield, either you user it, or by the time he leaks out of the backfield, he's probably getting sacked. So I actually like this uh, play call right here from Elm. Just run spinner, bring the house right there, boom, sack, fumble, and he's not going to pick it up? Wow, that was unlucky that he didn't get that. It should have actually been a scoop and score. Uh, but 4th and 34 for Elm here. And so he's going to end up getting the ball back down 7. And really... Ever since that first drive, actually, did we just miss a strip fumble? Oh, on the on the punt return, Elm fumbles and his opponent gets it back. Wow. Okay, so that's unfortunate. But, I mean, silver lining, Elm has been locking up this guy's offense basically since that first drive. Um, That first drive, he hit the wheel route down the sideline uh, for the touchdown. But ever since Elm started making that man-to-man -man adjustment on the outside receiver in snugs, He's been locking up the snugs. He went to single back wide trips, hit him with the big play. So he's basically had two huge plays, and then everything else Elm's been doing good at adjusting with. So I actually uh, am not scared, really, for Elm in this game right now. Uh, flat route right there picks up four, it looked like. So his opponent's showing that he's willing to run something other uh, than that play action play out of a single back wide trips. So Elm going to have to start expecting something like that. His opponent's still chewing clock, so definitely shortening this game. HP dive, it looks like. Elm all over it with the hit stick. Chris Johnson picks up two yards. So third and four here for his opponent. Big down. His opponent's been struggling to move the ball ever since, you know, those first two drives like I talked about. So let's see what he goes with here. Wide receiver screen. Gets a rat catch. Sammy Watkins not going to be able to drag the defenders. Actually picks up zero. So fourth and three, no huddle. So, okay, fourth and three, no huddle out of single back wide trips. So you have to know, okay, he just audible to single back double. So, you think about, okay, what are the single back doubles likely um, quick audibles, right? It's probably an HP dive. It's probably four verticals if, it, if it's a deep audible. It's probably slants for the quick audible. And the play action is probably something random. So you're thinking he's probably going to a play action or a four verticals. Um, I would probably expect play action. I just don't think four verticals on fourth and three is good. Um, 
So I would be expecting the play action audible here. So this is another case where if I'm Elm, I might just run spinner and send the house. Uh, but let's see what he decides to do here. His opponent calling out some audibles looks like. Uh, DB fire to press looks like might have been four verticals, but the pressure gets there. Yeah, it was four verticals, but the pressure uh, got there for Ballistic Elm with the pass rush. His DT getting an instant spin move. You could see the four verticals. Uh, you could kind of diagnose it with that seam route, and then the fade route on the outside. It looks like his opponent went with a slant, and then a backside in actually blocked only five. So pretty brave from his opponent blocking nobody extra other than his O line on fourth and three against Dollar. Uh, when Elm easily could have been either sending Spinner or sending both corners out of DB Fire 2 Press. Either way, Elm gets the block shed, and, I mean, unlucky for his opponent, yes, that Elm got such a quick block shed, but uh, kind of makes up for maybe the fumble on the punt. So let's go ahead and see what Elm can do here. Down by 7, third quarter. His opponent looks like he paused the game, so going to go ahead and try to fast forward through this. I'm not sure how long this pause actually lasted. There we go. All right, so a gun wide trips once again for Elm. So Elm showing he's very comfortable in gun wide trips as well as gun bunch. Um, and his opponent has shown that whenever Elm's in gun wide trips, he likes to send that pressure off the right edge. When he's in gun bunch, he likes to send it off the left. So right edge pressure once again. Elm going up top likes that one-on-one -on -one matchup with Des Bryant, but the ball gets swatted out of his hand. So I don't mind that at all. You have, you know, 99 overall Des Bryant take that one-on-one -on -one shot. If his opponent's, you know, leaving a safety out there on him, basically manned up right there. Double covers Des Bryant, goes to it again, goes for the aggressive catch, gets swatted out once again. So maybe tunneling a little bit at that point. Um, I think you did have, you know, once again, it looks like this C route is kind of what you want to throw. This is covered. He's always using that dig route over the middle. He's been manning up the halfback and then manning up Des. So maybe make him pay with you know a pass lead on the c route you know cut it off from that deep defender out there since he still looks like he's running that cover six um but elm likes what he sees on that right edge side uh with that des bryant item so maybe he can exploit that later on in the game gun bunch to the right third and ten his opponent still threatening pressure off the right edge motion inside from elm goes with the z spot set up des bryant on the post dot so let's go ahead and take a look at kind of how that happened right there. Actually, accidentally went forward instead of backwards. But you can see right here, once again, his opponent goes man-to-man -man assignment on the running back. He's all over the middle of the field. Elm went with the motion in slant. Corner route looks like it's blanketed, but basically his opponent had to either pick um, with his user, you know, do I want to clamp down on the slant or do I want to drop back to the post? He clamps on the slant. Elm throws the post. A beautiful play. Beautiful route combo beautiful progression and he ends up getting the first down and that's going to take us to the fourth quarter here so elm down seven but threatening at the 27 yard line moving the ball pretty well against his opponent here uh with that gun wide trips formation pressure off the left edge throws it to larry and larry drops it and that was actually just a risky play altogether um pressure came flying in elm block seven so only three guys on routes and that was actually super dangerous if his opponent had taken a better route this is a pick um, I don't know why he kind of like looped around like that. If he would have just, you know, he started off like right here. If he just jumps, uh, that's an interception most likely. So um, lucky for Elm, although Fitzgerald dropped it, uh, that his opponent kind of didn't take a better angle towards that ball to cut it off and, uh, and get the interception. So gun wide trips once again, second and 10. Now pressure... Off that left edge, threatening pressure off the left edge, actually sends it off the right this time with the wide corner, and Elm goes to the C route that's been open for most of the game. So I think this is where Elm needs to start picking this guy apart. He doesn't really put a lot of priority on defending the outside of the formation. He doesn't put a lot of, you know, double flat combos. I don't know if he's ever used a double flat combo this game. And so I think that corner strike route concept could be really, really effective against somebody who likes to play like this, especially somebody who blitzes out of this you know, cover six, um, it's just really leaving that quarter side open uh, because of the fact that he's blitzing that that um, that um nickelback who's usually assigned to play that quarter flat. So he's got the far outside corner bailing every single time. So that flat is going to be open a lot of the time unless he makes other adjustments behind it. But he hasn't been doing that. So let's see. Elm second and goal at the two. His opponent had to call a timeout. Elm did a good job catching him out of his QB sneak D and 
you know, going no huddle almost gets in right there. But Darius Jackson gets stonewalled and Elm ends up getting in with the QB sneak. So once again, his opponent having a lot of trouble stopping that QB sneak. And it's been reliable for Elm all game long. So tied up 14-14. I actually like the position Elm's in now or right now because of the fact his opponent hasn't really been moving the ball. Once again, back to gun snugs and you see Elm make the adjustment immediately. Manning up Ty Montgomery. That's the guy you got to watch. So love it. Uh, let's see what he goes to here uh, for his opponent. Gun Snuggy Bears goes flat route, and and you'll give him that all day. I mean, he he broke the tackle. That's not going to happen every time, but he took a huge shot from Mel Blunt. You'll live with that if you are Ballistic Elm, in my opinion, for now. Um, obviously, you don't want to let him do it all the way down the field, but um, on first down, first and ten, first play of the drive, you'll live with something like that. So second and eleven here. Own 35, good play, really blowing up that HB base. Ever since the first drive, uh, his opponent hasn't really been having any success with that HB base. Broke off two long runs, and then ever since then, nothing. Okay, so gun doubles uh, here for his opponent. Um, I'm not quite sure what you would expect here, so I'd play more of a vanilla defense if I am Elm. He goes 0-1 trap and actually tries to get to the outside. Chris Johnson picks up five yards. Interesting play call. Definitely no way you can really expect that. Uh, 01 trap, really random, but not bad. Third and six, sets up a third and medium. I don't love the play call by his opponent. Uh, I don't think 01 trap on second and 10, kind of a weird call. Uh, maybe he thought the alignment with the pinch D line at a dollar uh, was good for it, but ends up picking up four right here. Goes back to gun snug. So you see the adjustment once again for Elm. His opponent goes high point corner route and gets the reception for the first down right there so great play by his opponent elm actually had the right defense his linebacker kind of sank in a little bit too far on this corner route so he didn't even really have to high point and i think he could have just thrown an outside uh, pass lead kind of put it right there and his receiver would have been able to catch it but high point hopkins goes up grabs it anyway and so kind of a uh, weird interaction right there with ballistic elms vertical hook usually they'll do a much better job of playing that corner route especially when they're shifted over like that and are now right across from them and so uh, kind of weird right there, right? Once again, goes back to it, high point to Hopkins over that vertical hook. So it looks like Elm's going to have to make an adjustment. Uh, looks like his opponent's figured out, you know, if I throw a high point to this corner out uh, behind that vertical hook, I'm going to have a lot of success. So HB base once again gets caught up on the line and takes a huge shot from Mel Blunt, picks up five. So his opponent definitely in field goal range. Basically a first down might end the game. Yeah, first down basically ends the game here. So second and five. Goes, draws back. Looks like he runs mesh. Goes with the high point over the middle and doesn't hold on to it. He did not need to high point this ball. Um, I'm not sure why he did. Once again, my thing got caught um, going backwards. But he did not need to high point this ball right here. In my opinion, Elm playing very aggressively. Uh, with his user right here all over these double drags you just have to you know inside pass lead it right there and your guy's gonna be able to catch that and cut it off from the safety high point opens himself up to a big hit from behind and he ends up dropping it so maybe inside pass lead no high point and he basically wins the game right there so mistake by his opponent uh, gives elm an extra life so third and five here once again first down basically ends the game now elm going with the cross man on hopkins which i don't mind goes corner route and checks down to Ty Montgomery. Beautiful play by Elm right there uh, to go ahead and make it fourth and one. Sorry about that, guys. My recorder actually ended up cutting off. So we're going to have to do the rest of the video through the Twitch VOD. I didn't really want to do it through the Twitch VOD because of the fact that, it, as you can see, whenever I pause it, it gets really dark and hard to see. Uh, but that's kind of what we're going to have to roll with for the rest of the video. So I apologize for that in advance. But right here... Kind of recap the situation. His opponent just got stopped one yard short. Fourth and one went no huddle. So basically, uh, Elm has zero timeouts left. So first down ends the game. He'll be able to kick a game-winning field goal, run the clock out. So big play here. Biggest play of the game, obviously, by far. Fourth and one. So let's see what his opponent wants to go with here. Goes with the outside corner route, and James Bradbury actually ends up jumping it and making a huge play for Elm. And breaking it up so you can kind of see right there a pre-snap elm goes with i'll try to highlight this the best i can through this twitch vod but he goes with the hard flat cloud flat setup on the right side of the field actually on both sides so he mirrored it 
went double flats on both sides, and he basically made it all up to himself to use her the middle. His opponent had been running basically this route combo of the entire game on at least one side of the field, uh, this flat route corner route, and he actually threw it a little late. If he would have thrown it here, you know, on tempo, on time, like as he's cutting, he could throw it right now, you know, and, and this guy's going to be able to make the catch. He's, he's, he's wide open. Nobody's around him. Elm cheating to this left side of the field. Rightfully so. He's got to cover those receivers as well. Looks like standard maybe just bench on the left side by his opponent. And that's probably what it was. It was probably just literally just this setup, a flat route on the right, and then a check down to his running back right there out of the backfield. Uh, but Elm cheating to the left. If he throws it right now, he's got it. But throws it just a little too late. James Bradbury able to cut and make up that ground and break up the pass. So missed a, missed opportunity for his opponent. A little late on the read, but still good defensive setup to be able to be in a position to make that play by Ballistic Elm, in my opinion. So he goes PA post, cross shot, first play, goes up top to Des Bryant, tries to hit him deep on the first play, and incomplete. So his opponent's corner has been doing a good job of breaking that deep pass up to Des Bryant, but he's he's been committed trying to go to it. So goes back to corner strike here, table route out the backfield, Darius Jackson. Breaks a tackle, picks up eight. So I like it right there. Third and two, put yourself in a third and short uh, so that you can just pick up the first down and keep the drive alive. His opponent still in this nickel two, four, five. Maybe no pressure here. Yeah, so uh, as you could see, I'll point out and go backwards right there. Ooh, that was dangerous. But it looked like he had, I mean, good defense by his opponent, right? He's got, you know, double flats on the outsides, actually on both sides, it looks like. Double flats. And his opponent actually was stuck using the flat right there uh, but maybe he could have hit this in route right here as you see um as you're going to be able to see he's running over the middle and uh his opponent clicked in looks like clicked in the stick to send both of the the defenders in that area so if elm uh, could have pulled up and just thrown that route right there but very hard read to make especially in the moment can't fault him for that at all uh, but as you can see kind of something kind of a telltale sign as to why i thought there wasn't any pressure uh, his opponent didn't press right so uh, kind of when people don't press it, it kind of gives away people tend to do that for some reason they won't press when they're not sending pressure so it's a different look it looks a little different it's not as aggressive so it kind of just leads you to think okay this guy might not be blitzing anymore he's probably dropping back that's exactly what happened so elm actually ends up picking up the first down on that pretty dangerous scramble right there so it looks like four vertical setup blocking seven and he's got the one-on-one -on -one again with Dez Bryant down the left sideline. And Dez has beat his man again for the second time all game. And a huge play. And his opponent actually ends up conceding, I believe, right there. Yeah. So his opponent ends up conceding the game right there. We can go back and look at that final play. And this is something that his opponent had been doing basically the entire time. He was comfortable leaving this guy on the backside on an island. Whether it was you know that corner or the safety, sometimes he would man up as well. But he was comfortable leaving them on an island with Des Bryant, and Elm burned him twice with that fade route down the sideline. And right there, as you can see, ends up putting him in position. He would have been able to kick a game-winning field goal and end the game, so his opponent just went ahead and quit out. So great game from both players, in my opinion, right there. Uh, you can take a look at the leaderboard. Ballistic Elm ranked number one. Pretty insane. Uh, fantastic record by him. Great accomplishment being ranked number one on any leaderboard. So shout out to him. Uh, but this game, definitely a lot of fun to take a look at. Definitely a lot of fun to break down. It's kind of hard breaking it down, like, as it's all happening. So I, I do my best to explain. I'm sorry if, you know, some things I kind of rush through. I just don't want the video to last too long. I don't want to bore anybody. So definitely comment. Let me know what you guys thought. Let me know what I can do better for these kind of videos. Let me know if you'd like to see these kind of videos in the future. And until next time, guys, take it easy. Thank you.